Welcome to 300 Days in Hardcore Modded Minecraft. Our challenge is to survive 300 days. We have three main objectives in today's video. Objective number one is to craft dragon steel weapons such as the battle axe and the sword. Our second objective is to eliminate a death worm. These death worms are found beneath the sand. Our final objective is to defeat a stage five fire dragon. They are found in the depths of the twilight forest. Now the question is, can we survive? Special thanks to Bisect Hosting for creating this server for us. If you guys want to make your own server, click the link in the description and you can use code PAINFUL for 25% off your first month. Day 201 to 204, we began creating our fire dragon's nest. We decided a great place to build this was directly above the blacksmith that we had built. We used the remaining netherrack that we had from the nether and we created an entire floor with the netherrack. This is what the design ended up basically looking like. At this point, we still haven't placed the dragon egg, nor have we placed the fire on the netherrack, but it looks pretty good. I placed it as center as I could, and Forrest lit the fire, and just like that, ladies and gentlemen, our dragon was now hatching. While we were waiting for the dragon to hatch, we took one of your suggestions from the comments and decided to make this glass aquarium into an armory. While I was essentially making a stage for the armor stands, Forrest was working on making an enchantment table. We placed our one armor stand, then went back and gathered a few more and placed them. This is what Forrest and I made within the two days. You know what? That's actually not too bad. It looks pretty sick. Day 207, Forrest and I went back to our blacksmith to see if the dragon hatched. I didn't notice it at first, but the dragon was actually hiding in the corner. A cool thing about these dragons is when they're babies, you can actually right click them with an open hand and they'll actually jump on your shoulder. That's pretty awesome. Before I forget to mention, we crafted a couple of dragon meals, and when feeding the dragon, it actually grows in size. You could only imagine how big this thing's gonna get. From days 208 to 213, Forrest and I headed to the nether. We needed to collect more onyx ore to complete our onyx armor set. As we were looking for onyx ore, we heard some blaze firing coming from the ground beneath us. There behold, some sort of gold secret room. We decided to just dive right in and eliminate these blazes. After eliminating the blazes, our first chest we opened, we got some sort of pendant, a totem of returning, but in this second chest, we found a backfire cannon, which when we shot it, actually didn't do any damage. Like, I don't understand. What is the point of this thing? We shot at Forrest one more time to see if it actually did anything, but it doesn't look like it's meant to do damage. Once we arrived home, we found this Frostbound in our base with 205 armor. Like, this thing was a tank. It took so many hits to kill him. And he was breaking our chest, man. Like, what What the heck, man? Now we gotta, now we gotta fix all this. Anyways, next up on the agenda, we were going to create our onyx armor and then, of course, enchant it. As we were walking in, though, we realized there was a random villager named Baani. I'm not sure what to do with him. You can't trade with him, so comment down below, what do we do with this thing? So we went ahead, made our onyx chestplate, and we made our onyx laggings. And shortly after we enchanted, a TNT frostbound decided to enter our base. Wow, isn't that just great? Now we have a huge hole in our ground. After eliminating the frostbound, Forrest and I were really curious to see where this thing came from. So what we did is we followed its tracks, and as you guys can see, it made a massive tunnel leading all the way from a dungeon leading into our armory. That is just absolutely absurd. On day 215 to day 217, Forrest and I were on a mission to find pixies. To tame pixies, you need to provide them with cake. Once pixies are given cake, they are able to be tamed. Once you have a tamed pixie, you can actually get custom potion effects from them. My pixie gave me luck, forest pixie gave him jump boost, but there's even some pixies out there that can give you permanent strength and speed, so we just kind of got unlucky, I guess. After returning home, we had to punch the pixie to take the food away from him. That way the pixie could sit down without flying away. For the next four days, Forrest and I headed into the Aether in hopes to find a Valkyr boss. After days of running, we finally spotted some sort of citadel-like object floating in the sky. We also noticed that there was a cobblestone pillar being built up the entire way like somebody had already been here. 
Upon entering the Valkyrie Citadel, on each of these platforms there's supposed to be chests, and we realize that every single chest is gone. Almost like it's been looted. We made our way down the stairs and was greeted by one of the Valkyrie guards, so we took this down. Upon entering the Valkyrie boss room, we see somebody. And he one-shots the Valkyrie boss. After he mined a hole in the wall, he looked back at us. Me and Forrest looked at each other and charged at him. He immediately ran and jumped off with his elytra and flew out of the aether. After a quick trip back to base, we came back out to the Aether and we finally found another Valkyrie boss. So of course, the only way to get there was to essentially build our way over there. So we built all the way up and then we threw our Ender Pearl across the Aether. Yeah, this was kind of a scary Ender Pearl. It seemed like if we missed this Ender Pearl, we would die. But hey, Forrest made it so I should be able to as well. We found the entrance to the base and was immediately greeted by a Valkyrie. Each Valkyrie drops a victory medal. Once achieving 10 victory medals, we are able to fight the Valkyrie boss. We went to loot one of the chests, and it seems like a lot of these chests are rigged as well, so we gotta be careful that the chest doesn't eat us. As we continued looting, Forrest and I got jumped by a gang of Valkyries. Good thing we were both in fully enchanted Onyx armor, otherwise this would have been a death wish. We entered into the Valkyrie boss room, and we traded our 10 victory medals to fight it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Forrest and I are drinking our Strength Potion and Speed Potion, and the fight begins. The Valkyrie boss immediately charges and is aggroed onto Forrest. What I try to do is use my Ice Crystal to freeze it in place. But it seems every time I try and freeze it in place, it teleports to another location. So, we have to use our Mithril Sword instead. The Valkyrie kept charging, and ladies and gentlemen, just like that, the Valkyrie has been taken out. The Valkyrie seemed to drop a silver key, so we were expecting there to be some sort of hidden chest. And just like that, we found the chest hiding underneath a set of trap doors, and within the chest, there was some Valkyrie armor and some Valkyrie tools, so we managed to take those home. On day 227, after returning home, Forrest and I set sail to go and defeat another Sea Serpent. The reason why we needed to defeat a Sea Serpent was to get scales to craft Tide Guardian armor. As we were boating, we saw what seemed to be a sea serpent, like, glitching around in the water. With that being said, Forrest and I moved back to a safe location to drink our potions. We popped our strength, speed, and night vision. We also popped a golden apple for the extra hearts, and the fight began. We immediately took a lot of damage, so what we had to do was block our shield. As you can see, our shield durability was getting absolutely owned. Forrest was throwing potions on the ground, trying to make me live. After blocking a few more hits, the sea serpent serpent was taken down. Once we were back at base at the armory, we collected all the scales that we had gathered over the course of the past few hundred days and created myself some Tide Guardian armor. As you guys can see, this armor looks amazing and thanks to Forrest for enchanting my armor. Next up, we put all of our Onyx armor on the armor stands and it just looks awesome. We wanted to see how fast we would swim, so we went in the water. And as you guys can see, we are literally insanely fast. Like, I don't understand how we are so fast. How is this allowed? Like, we are speed demons. Our next objective was to head to the Twilight Forest and try to find a Vidzar Naga. These things are pretty insane. Just wait. While we were running through the Twilight Forest, we found ourselves running into a dragon's platform, and we weren't exactly sure where the dragon was, but we know we didn't kill it, so it had to be around here somewhere. While we were scavenging the den, the dragon finally showed up, blasting us with his fire. Thankfully, this was only a stage 1 dragon, so it wasn't going to be able to do that much damage to us if we use our shield correctly. As you guys can see, we've only been fighting this thing for a short period of time, and it's already half health. It's constantly blowing fire and destroying the entire environment around us, but just like that, that dragon was slain. As we were collecting the gold from the dragon's den, I see something in the distance, and it seems to be the Vitsar Naga's den, right beside this dragon platform. You can see it in the distance, and before entering the den, we pop our strength and speed, and we Ender Pearl directly in. As you guys can see, this thing looks to be some sort of giant snake that just slithers around the garden. Surprisingly, as big as this creature is, it didn't do nearly as much damage as we thought. After only fighting this thing for about a minute, we took it down, and that was actually a lot easier than we thought. We ended up getting the Naga Trophy, which is I guess essentially just his head, so we brought that back to base. After we went back to base, we decided to head back out in the Twilight Forest because we needed to find a bunch of Tier 1 to Tier 3 dragons. We needed to collect Ice Dragon and Fire Dragon blood. 
And a short while later, after drinking our potions, we found a sleeping ice dragon. We took that as an opportunity to get the first few hits. I enderpearled directly down onto its head and it started blasting me with ice shards and I actually almost went down there. As you guys can see, it doesn't look like this dragon is particularly happy with us waking it up. We swam across the water getting a few more hits eliminating this ice dragon. And as you guys can see, me and Forrest were using our glass bottles that we use from our potions to collect ice dragon blood. On day 246, we were on our way back home, and we found another dragon lair. As we approached the lair, it looked to have already been looted. And as we looked in the dungeon, there was a dead dragon, which looked to be a stage 5 dragon. This is for sure a stage 5 dragon, which is the strongest dragon in the entire game. And just to confirm it, we looted the corpse and it was a stage 5 fire dragon. This head is massive. On day 248, we headed behind our blacksmith and started expanding. We were going to turn this into a forgery. This is where we're going to create our dragon steel weapons. After putting up the upper walls to prevent being attacked from any mobs, we started lighting up the entire place. And we felt putting stone slabs on the exterior of the walls would be a really cool touch. The next thing we had to do was create something called a bestiary, which is essentially a book. And to make that book, we use the manuscripts that we got from the dragon's dens. It creates a book with a lot of information about a lot of the mobs in this mod pack. After creating our forgery room, Forrest and I headed back into the Twilight Forest because we needed to slay a lot of dragons. We needed to collect a lot of dragon scales, that way we were able to create our dragon steel forge, which is essential if we want to make dragon steel weapons. After slaying a bunch of tier 1 to tier 3 dragons, we decided it was time to feed my dragon. So as you guys can see, we put our dragon back on our shoulders, it's a little bigger this time, and we decided to give it some dragon meals. As you guys can see, after feeding it those dragon meals, it got relatively big. This thing is getting scarier and scarier by the minute. Next up on the agenda was to build a dragon steel forge, which required dragon bone blocks. This is what the dragon steel forge looks like when it's completed. We had to create dragon bone walls because once we chain the dragon to this wall, it's not going to be able to leave. Whereas if I used a regular cobblestone wall, it would easily be able to break the cobblestone and fly away. After chaining the dragon to the dragon bone wall, Forrest gave me some more dragon meals, and this time, it was a lot more. So, we give the dragon 25 dragon meals. This thing started growing like a madman. As soon as we hopped on, his hearts took up literally my entire screen. Okay, this thing is insane. Now guys, keep in mind, this is like a stage 1 dragon at this point. If we keep feeding it, we can turn it into a stage 5 dragon. I went ahead and made some iron armor for my dragon. I didn't have enough to make diamond armor unfortunately, but I did want my dragon to have some sort of protection and look at that, that actually looks pretty insane. We figured, hey, since it's big enough now, might as well take it for a ride and look at this thing, man. This thing is huge, it takes up almost my entire screen, even when I'm in F5 mode. But yeah, this is just it at stage one, imagine this thing at like stage five. We then went to our millstone and placed coal inside of it. After smelting the coal, it turns into coal dust. We then went to our blacksmith, put in iron ingots and the coal dust to make crucible steel ingots. Once the crucible steel ingots were made, we put it in the dragon forge along with fire dragon blood. My dragon was using its flame breath to heat up the forge, creating a fire dragon steel ingot. It is time to craft our battle axe. We placed our wither bones in and created a fire dragon steel axe. This thing is insane. We spent the next seven days looking for a death worm. And while we were looking for that death worm, a giant what seemed to be mere image of my skin came running at me. And it did three hearts of damage even though I was blocking my shield. This thing hits like a truck. I think if it wasn't for these ender pearls, I would be a dead man right now. And guys, once again, if we die, the entire world deletes. So thank God for these ender pearls. With a couple more hits, we were able to take down that giant bald thing. And as you guys see, it dropped a giant pickaxe. This thing was literally like 10 times as big as me. 
Anyways, after killing the giant, we realized that the giant was guarding a death worm. These are the worms that live beneath the sand, and every time they attack you, they dive out and then dive back in the sand. It actually turns out these things are pretty weak and don't have that much health at all, so we just kind of killed it. After eliminating the giant and the death worm, it took us two days to return back home. Once returning back home, we decided to get rid of this old farm that we never used and decided to turn it into a trophy room where we can hang all of our dragon heads and other sort of trophies. We actually used the blocks from the secret lair that we found in the nether. We thought it was a pretty cool design, so we decided to make our trophy room out of it. The trophy room isn't quite finished yet, but you get the idea of how we want it to look. We got our dragon heads from the chest back at base and threw them up on the wall. We thought that looked pretty sick and look how big that stage five dragon is. As we were decorating the trophy room, some zombies went in front of us and we looked around and realized we were surrounded by hundreds, if not thousands of zombies. We tried to hold off the horde of zombies by just killing them all inside our trophy room, but very quickly realized we were getting overrun. We immediately ran out of the trophy room and tried to run all the way back to our base. Once Forrest and I got to the top of our base, we noticed there was someone flying a dragon above us known as the Devastator. He started by casting fire all over our barn. He then proceeded to cast fire all over our lumberjack station as I jumped off to try to fight the horde of zombies. There was so many zombies, it was like almost impossible to kill everything. Meanwhile, our entire barn started getting burned down by the Devastator, and without realizing earlier, I had put my fire dragon steel axe into a chest, meaning I wasn't even using my best weapon. We eventually made it back to the base and I found the chest with my dragon axe in here. Hopefully this helps me defeat these zombies. As you guys can see, the Devastator has almost completely destroyed our entire town. After eliminating most of the horde that the Devastator sent onto us, we potted our strength and speed potions and ender pearled towards it. And as soon as our ender pearl landed, the Devastator flew away, never to be seen again. That was a very tough and long night defending our home. Unfortunately, our city is now in shambles. For the next nine days, Forrest and I had to essentially completely demolish the remaining parts of our base as our base was completely griefed. Not only was our base griefed, our barn was griefed, our windmill was griefed, and even our lumberjack station was kind of griefed. Our objective was to rebuild everything out of essentially stone supplies. That way, if the Devastator comes back with fire, our entire base is not going to get destroyed. We also decided to take down what was left of the windmill, which honestly wasn't too much. Most of the windmill was turned into this like black scorched sand. So we decided to get rid of the wood and obviously we're going to be placing some stone supplies there just in case he comes back. Our lumberjack station actually didn't get hit too hard by the fire as it had a big cobblestone roof over it, but we decided to replace all the wood anyways because we didn't want to take any chances. The final structure we had to delete was our barn because the entire roof inside of it got completely griefed. So as you guys can see, we've essentially recreated our town. We made a couple changes to our mansion, making it a little bit more aesthetic. But yeah, most of the town doesn't contain any more wood anymore as we don't want anything else to catch fire. We also created an extension in the dragon's den. That way when Forrest hatches his dragon, it has a place to live too. And as you see, we made a little bit of work to the barn as well. On day 286, Forrest and I head out to find a stage 4 female ice dragon. Shortly after leaving our base, we actually found a dragon's den not too far away. We immediately popped our strength and speed as usual, but we also have a fortitude potion, which essentially helps us take less damage. As soon as Forrest starts bowing this ice dragon, some wolf comes and knocks him directly into the tunnel with the dragon. Being in a confined area with a dragon is death, but luckily he brought his ender pearls. As Forrest went for another angle on the dragon, I got hit down into a dragon's den. This is typically not a good place to be. My shield is already halfway to being broken and I am on half HP. This thing does insane damage. It is constantly putting icicles on my feet, preventing me from moving. Since I'm frozen in place, I try using my ender pearls. It's the only way I'm able to escape from this thing, and I actually find myself escaping into a corner. This allowed me to get into a position to repop my potions before charging back in. As you guys can see, my dragon fire seal sword is very effective on an ice dragon, as it burns and is finally eliminated. As we got closer, we used the glass bottles from our potions to acquire the ice dragon blood. 
We then proceed on looting the stage for Ice Dragon. That way Forrest can obtain the egg. And look at the head. It's actually pretty huge. And from day 289 to 291, we finally returned back to our base. And we made a little area where we're going to place the Ice Dragon. So you got to fill up the water with hole. You then place the egg inside of it. And after waiting for about 10 seconds, it turns into ice. After traveling through the Twilight Forest for seven days, Forrest and I had finally found what looked to be a stage five fire dragon. After popping my speed and strength, the dragon throws me up in the air. And as I come down, I nearly die instantly. We go in for another hit on this dragon and it hits me a couple times and I already am at half health. This thing does a ridiculous amount of damage. We had to play this smart. I was trying to block my shield as much as possible. That way I prevent as much damage as I can, but it's literally raining fire constantly on me. So I had to end her for a little way. As I was being buried in fire, I jumped into the dragon's den and forest eliminated the dragon. The dragon was eliminated on top of a tree. We collected the dragon's blood and then finished looting the dragon. On day 300, we made it back to base and the ice dragon had hatched. Look at that little thing. It's actually pretty cute. I mean, if you compare that to my dragon, at least it's pretty cute. The final thing Forrest wanted to do was give his dragon dragon meals. And look at that. That thing is growing pretty dang fast. If you made it this far into the video, comment 100 days. That's how I'll know you're a true fan. I really appreciate the support and I'll see you all soon.